Yo, 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 yo. What is up, y'all? My name is Robert Donaldson, and welcome back to another college football pick 'em video. And it's good to be back, especially when we're talking about a sport that we are absolutely raking in right now. Obviously, you know, the last couple of videos, I've had to come on here and say, you know what, we're still profitable this season, but it's been very up and down. It's been very volatile. Well, this week, what we're talking about is how damn good we've been. And I I'm seeing an upwards trajectory. I want to stay on that path. And we haven't got a really great week in front of us here as well. And I don't really think there's going to be anything st staying in our way. I, I think we're starting to get dialed in here. We're starting to pick our spots really well. And we've got nine games that we're taking a look at in this video here too. And if you want to follow my college basketball bets every single day, even if there's not a video, definitely go over to Twitter slash X at Rob DFB. And same goes with NFL. And when Major League Baseball is in season, that as well. And college football, Monday through Friday, I also post my bets on there exclusively. This video is just pertaining to Saturday. But with all that being said, y'all, we of course need to shout out the sponsor of today's video, which is Underdog Fantasy. And again, use promo code ROBDFB when you're signing up over there and you'll get a pretty sweet deposit match bonus. And we just talked about a number of different leagues and different sports that are going on and, and taking place at the moment. And at Underdog Fantasy, you can do daily fantasy. You can do pick with players. And for those reasons, it gives you an extra market to tap into. And obviously, we've done pretty well with these in the past. And for those who are wanting to sign up and maybe even do their own thing, or do your own thing, rather, you know, go ahead and get signed up and get your deposit matched up to 100%. But with all that being said, y'all, let's go ahead and dive into this Saturday slate. All right, first up, we are taking a look at a matchup between Miami and Georgia Tech here at noon Eastern time, and this is a fun one, y'all. It's in Atlanta, Georgia, obviously, and when you're looking at Georgia Tech, this is a defense that has absolutely flipped a switch from just a season ago. I mean, they have went from, you know, a bottom 100 defense in all of college football to a top 10, arguably, defense in college football, and on the other side is undefeated Miami, and when you do have that undefeated billing this late in the season, you're going to get every single team's best shot, no matter who you are. And that's exactly what Georgia Tech is going to be able to do here. And when you look at Cam Ward and the Miami offense, they've succeeded on just moving the chains on third down repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. We've bet on the, uh, bet against Miami a couple times and, and profited. And in those spots, it's been mind-numbing because our defenses can't get off the field on third down. But when you look at this game, I think Georgia Tech has the perfect counter with Haynes King in this action as well. I, I think the offense is going to be able to pick Miami's defense apart, just like a number of other teams have as well. And for that reason, I say we take Georgia Tech getting 11.5 points for three units. And I say we take a full game stab at the money line for one unit here as well. For game number two, we are taking a look at a matchup between Texas State and UL Monroe. And UL Monroe has had a very surprisingly good season. And Texas State on the opposite side has kind of fallen short of a lot of expectations, including my own. And when you're looking at that quarterback position for Texas State, last week or the last time we bet on Texas State, it was unfortunate that Jordan McLeod could not finish that game, and it really just derailed our, our bet. It didn't feel like it had life at that point. But with him back in the fold this week, I think Texas State is still one of the more dominant teams in this conference, and despite the fact that UL Monroe has a glossier-looking record, I think Texas State is the far better team. So let's go ahead and lay the 7.5 points here with the Bobcats for two units for our second pick here on Saturday. For game number three, we are heading out to Piscataway, where we have the Rutgers Scarlet Knights taking on the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and another noon Eastern kick here, and when you're looking at this matchup, we've been really loving these Big Ten unders in the early window. We're 2-0 over the last two weeks, or, or two videos, rather, that I've posted on here, and when you're looking at this matchup in particular, Rutgers is coming off of a bye. Their offense has really struggled. I don't think that their offense is going to get better just because they had a bye week, but I do think that their defense is going to be capable of keeping them in it all the way through, and for that reason, 
you look at a total of 46 and a half, and I feel like this is a game that both teams probably don't even hit the 20s. So let's go ahead and take the under of 46 and a half for two units for our fourth bet here on Saturday. For game number four, we are taking a look at another Big Ten matchup, this time at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's going to be Michigan taking on Indiana, and roles are reversed in this matchup because the team laying 14 and a half points isn't the reigning national champion. It's the Indiana Hoosiers, and they are undefeated. They are now in the college football playoff rankings, and when you're looking at Indiana and how they've just dismantled teams, They've been one of the more impressive teams. I would even dare to say the most impressive team in all of college football when you're looking at, you know, where they started to where they have risen to. But at the same time, Michigan still has a defense that's worth respecting, despite the fact that their offense has been kind of inept. And they're going back to TJ Warren. We'll see what happens here in terms of how that offense can actually function. And I'm not overall, you know, excited and thinking that Michigan's going to be able to put up points here, but they're getting 14 and a half points. And Indiana at some point is going to have a little bit of a lapse and come up a little bit flat. And this is the type of game that it could definitely happen in. So let's go ahead and take Michigan in the 14 and a half points here for three units for our fifth bet here on Saturday. All right, next up, we are going a little bit off the radar in this matchup, although I will say one of these teams is ranked and I think getting very disrespected by a lot of people in the media. Now, that said, this matchup is Army and North Texas, and when you're looking at Army, quarterback Bryson Daly has been the guy in this offense. I I had never seen another player run this offense the way that he has run it. He's like a Keenan Reynolds, if you remember him at Navy, but just more jacked and a little bit more explosive. And when you're looking at this matchup against North Texas, I am a little bit worried about Army because Bryson Daly is banged up in in this game. And Eric Morris and the Mean Green have been rolling offensively for most of this season. And we've made some money back in these guys in underdog roles already. And when you look at this line, it opened up at 6.5. It's dropped down to 4.5. I feel like that's a clear indictment that Bryson Daly is definitely not going to play in this game. And even if he does, I think North Texas at home is going to be live here. So let's go ahead and take that four and a half points. And let's also take a stab here at the first half money line here on Saturday. All right, next up, we are taking a look at a fun SEC matchup. And I say fun SEC matchup when there's a million great games in the SEC this weekend, but We're actually going to be taking a look at one of the more under-the-radar ones between South Carolina and Vanderbilt, and we love both of these teams, y'all. We we took Vanderbilt on the money line against Alabama early in the year, one one of my better calls in a while, and when you're also looking at South Carolina, last week, South Carolina against Texas A&M was our biggest bet of the college football season, and it cashed very convincingly. We were basically celebrating in the third quarter, which is always a great feeling. And in this particular matchup, because of those recent events, I do feel like South Carolina might be riding a little bit too high right now. We always talk about the letdown factor in in these types of spots, and they do exist, especially when you're going on the road against a team like a Vanderbilt that hasn't really had that national respect for a long time. But Diego Pavia... Jerry Kill, Clark Leah, these guys have got this program and moving in the right direction, and Vanderbilt's a very good team. Don't get it twisted. This is not the Vanderbilt of the past. This is like the James Franklin Vanderbilt teams. This is a legit 8, 9, 10 game winner in terms of talent, and for that reason, getting 4.5 points at home against a team coming off a major win like that, I am all over Vanderbilt, so... Let's take the doors, getting the four and a half points here for three units, and let's ride with this Vanderbilt train into the sunset. All right, next up, we are taking a look at a matchup between UCF and Arizona State, and yes, this is a Big 12 matchup, although it looks so awkward, and I made the same joke last week on on last week's video for UCF taking on Arizona when we bet on UCF as well. But I I do think that UCF is just the terrorizer of these Arizona schools because these Arizona schools are catching UCF at the worst 
possible time. I think UCF in this game is going to be live, but we're getting three points. I say we take all of them for three units for our third to last bet here on Saturday. All right, for our second to last bet here, we are taking a look at a matchup between Nevada and Boise State, and I have never received more hate messages, not pertaining to me, but pertaining to a team that I kind of made you guys bet on, or at least suggested that you guys bet on, and that's Nevada, and Nevada really kind of ruined, and I won't say ruined, we had a great Saturday slate, we balled out on Friday, balled out on Thursday last week, college football has been rolling hard, but Nevada last week kind of put a damper at the end of the night and when you're looking at this matchup here against Boise State obviously they've got Ashton Jean T you know Boise State is one of those teams that's already being plugged into the college football playoff but every single year these types of teams that do have a little bit of Cinderella magic going on run into a, a weird little you know slump game and I do think Nevada is skilled enough offensively to maybe make something happen in the first half and then kind of ride on or hang on in the back half of this game. And when you're getting 24 and a half points, that's an absolutely great number to bet on in that type of spot. And, you know, for that reason that I kind of mentioned in the beginning part, maybe they do catch lightning in a bottle and can outscore Boise State in that first half. So let's go ahead and take the 24 and a half points here for three units and for a full extra unit. Let's take a first half money line stab here as well. All right, for our last bet of the day, we are heading out to Pullman, Washington, where we have the Washington State Cougars taking on Utah State. And these two are actually going to be conference opponents starting next season. But before then, we've still got an out of conference matchup in this spot. And Utah State offensively has been one of those teams that can move the ball successfully and has a passing attack. But their defense has been awful, and in this particular matchup, I do think that they can match Washington State for a lot of this game from a scoring perspective. It's just a matter of whether or not they can kind of keep those turnovers in check, and when you're looking at 20 and a half points, I say we take that full game for three units, and for a full extra unit, I say we take a stab at the first half money line here as well. All that being said, I really want to thank you guys for checking out today's video and I want to give you guys again, you know, just a major shout out. You've been showing love on all the recent videos here and for that reason, I can't thank you enough. We're hitting some benchmarks that I haven't ever seen on this channel, which is a really nice feeling and that means content's going to be keeping coming. You know, I, I'm going to try to put out a number of videos throughout the week, but again, you know, if you want every single pick that I post, Make sure you're subscribed on here, but also make sure you're following me on Twitter slash X at RobDFB, because if I don't have a video, I have my bets posted on that platform. And for that all being said, y'all, I will see you in another video. Take it easy.